Welcome back to Cinema 4D Boot Camp. I'm Neil Barenblatt here with CreativeCal.net doing Cinema 4D Boot Camp. We're going into texturing. We are going into texturing, so let's get started. Textures, materials, pretty much the same thing inside of Cinema 4D. So for now, consider them synonymous. What we want to do is make this here sphere look pretty. So first of all, let's make it a little bigger, just like that. Let's give it more detail to work with, maybe uh, 60, uh, 60 segments, and we're going to make it editable. So just like we learned in the modeling tutorial, let's do that because we're going to be doing some polygon selections. Polygonal selections, not polygamous, okay? Polygonal selections. And we're actually probably not going to use the polygonal selection tool. I never freaking use that thing. I just thought I'd share with you what it is. Okay, so let's make this thing red. How do we do it? Well, we probably want to texture it with the material. So we're going to go into our materials tab, or if you don't have a tab there or anywhere available, go to window, um, material manager, file, new material. Automatically, we're given a new texture, and we have the ability to look at some of the things over here, some of its settings, or we can double click and see everything about this texture. Okay, so color, I think we want to change it to red. All right, so we did that. And now all we got to do is either drag this onto our object or our object in the objects manager. Voila, render, we have a red sphere. Texturing at its core is as simple as that, but it does get more complicated. And let me show you. Uh, so in what way should I show you first? Let's think. All right, let's look at the difference between clicking on the texture here and clicking on the texture here, okay? Because believe it or not, they are different. Here, you can see some of the basic settings you can change or some of the settings that you have clicked on will show up over there, all right? As opposed to clicking here, this has more to do with how the texture is being applied to an object rather than what the texture looks like, which is what you get when you click on here. So right now, it's uh, this is really useful with like logos or, or like, you know, bricks or, or like a real texture. You can offset it in the X direction, offset in the Y. You can project it differently. We're not really going to get into these now. You can... I've never had this really work for me one way or the other, so I'm going to ignore it. You can name it. You can freaking double click and name it there. Red, so you know what it is. You can even add textures to layers. So I'm going to do that. And now I have layer options in my texture, in my materials manager. But let's go ahead and take a look at what our options are inside of how the texture should look. So we have color, we have diffusion. We have luminance, which makes this thing completely luminant, or however much you want according to the brightness. Transparency, so we can lower the transparency or raise the transparency. And and I'm not going to get into any of the crazy texturing here. I just want to introduce you to it. Reflection, and we can lower or raise the reflection. We can also add something. I will get into this because it's extremely useful. If you go to texture under reflection, because you can choose a texture and do Fresnel, right there it often creates a much more realistic result for for reflection so just keep that in mind environment this is a, a good quick way to do reflections I found so if you want to load your environment like a picture of the outside right there it does it can do a pretty good job of simulating a reflection because sometimes reflection turns up the render times way too much and sometimes doing an environment uh, will get the job done Fog, dull now. Bump. This is where you start adding texture to your texture. Let me explain. The best way to do this is to click on bump, hit the texture arrow, and go to noise. You can also load an image right here. So, actually, I could do soil cracked. 
So check that out. That's what I'll do. Actually, I'm going to load the black and white one because Bump only reads black, gray, and white images. I mean, it'll read a color, but it's, it's not going to give you as good results as you would this way. So this is my strength of my Bump. And if we actually right click here, make it huge, and make it a, well actually we can see a sphere so we know exactly what we're getting. Now if we render, look at all that, you can see exactly my texture did that. Likewise, if instead I cleared that and I went to the noise texture, <coughs> <coughs> these are what are called procedural textures, which means they they are they're like vector they you can make them as big and small as you want they're kind of they kind of just loop okay so if I go into noise if I click on that I have many options for noise and you just kind of experiment with these because they all do something different that kind of looks cool so I'll do that and I'm gonna increase the global scale a little bit and now it kind of looks like a brain so yeah you, you, you start to see what's happening here I can increase the strength to insane amounts and it kind of works for this texture but a lot of textures it's good to be real subtle on so that also looks pretty good for let's say I increase the global scale to like 700 I don't know what that would be good for but like something I don't know it still looks kind of like a brain, to be honest, but whatever. So that's what Bump does. Extremely useful, probably the most useful one. Uh, normal, ignore for now. Alpha, that's to create alphaness with this, so... <laughs> that was a good explanation. So if I choose noise and then render, you can see some of it is transparent and some of it is not, but it's hard to tell in a black background. So we'll put a cube behind it, for instance. And I can see some of the cube. So... Hopefully that makes a little more sense, but I'll unclick that and I'll get rid of the cube. Specular, also extremely useful. Let's say I have a light over here and I turn up, well, let's render it right now. You got a little specular right there. See that? See that specular? If I bring up the height a lot, that's what's going to happen. And you can already see the preview over here. We'll bring in the width and bring that height way up. So yeah, now it's very concentrated specularity. But if I brought that height back down and really drag the width out, now it's a very diffused specularity. So that's kind of how you control how specular something is. You can also use the inner width, the, the, the width period, the height, the fall off. Lots of ways that looks very cartoony. So maybe if that's what you're going for, just play around. There's the color of your specular. You can add glow if you want. Yeah, it'll only render when you render out to your computer. And a displacement map. This will actually, as opposed to bump, which creates kind of an illusion of altering your geometry, displacement will actually alter your geometry. And it insane render time uh, increases, but it can really be a lifesaver as well. So for instance, I'm going to go to noise and right off the bat we get it pretty spiky but if I press sub polygon displacement and bring that down now we get it, it like drastically changed your geometry in ways that bump probably could not and now you got this really watery thing but it actually is changing your geometry as opposed to bump which is which is not doing anything this is this is more real we can say it's, it's Honestly, it's less useful, in my opinion, for what I do at least, but it's more real looking. And sometimes bump and, and displacement can go hand in hand pretty well together. So pay attention to that too. Another thing with texturing. So let's put a logo on this thing so we can understand kind of how the alpha works actually and how to load uh, a personal image into Cinema 4D. So I'm gonna do file new material just like that. I'm gonna load it on top of this red okay so I'm going to double click and for my color I want to load my MoGraphShire logo. So I'm gonna go to projects MoGraphShire right there I'm going to go to Tut's Boot Camp and I'm going to go to logo.png just like that. 
and I'm going to drag um, logo.png over the sphere so it is on the right side of the red texture. Hierarchically, whatever's on the right side in the in, in terms of textures is what gets placed over something. So right now, if we render it, you can see, yeah, it's huge freaking mogar. It looks awful. Okay, so first of all, let's size it down. And we can we can see all of that right here. Let's get rid of this light so we can see everything. And if we click on the this tag, the tag of the texture, we can decrease the length. Well, let's tell it not to tile anymore. Let's decrease the length to 5% and the width to 5%. And then let's do X offset so it's in front of us. And I think it's insanely small. I can see it's on the top. So let's do Y offset. There it is. Let's make the length, let's do 10 by 10%. Yeah, so that's a little better. But we've got this white in the background, and that's because we need to alpha this channel. So on color, what we want to do is in the texture uh, chooser right here, we want to click the arrow and go to copy channel. And in the alpha, we want to paste channel, just like so. So now you can see we have a black and white. Well, we want to make this black and white. So. Also, a way you can do that is go to texture under your effects, go to filter, and make this desaturated, up the contrast, maybe allow clipping, just like that. And so this isn't the greatest way to do this. You probably want to bring in your own alpha texture that you would create in Photoshop or something, because now what's going to happen is, well, that turned out all right. You get the point. It got rid of our background because alphas are black on white images that you use to, to decide what's being shown and what's not. So we, we did what we want to want to do there. You know, nothing looks good about this, but that's okay. We're not really learning how to make things look good. We're looking, we're learning how to make things period. So yeah, just like that. Lastly, what I want to show you guys with the texturing is to set selections. Okay. So let's say I want, to have, well, let's just do it and you'll get exactly what I mean. I made this editable so I can make different parts of the image or different parts of the sphere be different colors. So I'm going to select a group of polygons right there and I'm gonna make a blue bruise right there. So first of all, let's make a new material just like so and make it blue, baby blue. Sure, why not? And we will bring it over the sphere, just like that. Now, with that selection made, if you go to selection, set selection, we get a new triangle tag up here named polygon selection. We're gonna name this blue bruise, just so it's, you know, easy to know. And in the, the tag of the texture, we wanna drag that triangle to the selection. So now when we render, we have our, our blue bruise, our red and our MoGraph Shire all on one object just because it's textured to the way we want. And so that's texturing a different different parts of an object differently. You can do this infinitely how many ever times you want. So I can do new selection and then make sure you're not clicked on that anymore because if you if you select something new and then do set selection while that's clicked on, it'll reset that selection to this. So I'm gonna make sure I'm not selected on that. To set selection and name this blah, 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 blah. and then you can also double click inside of the materials window to make a new material and create green just like so yep BAM awesome now remember that whatever is to the right is what's being shown over everything else. So now our MoGraph Shire is being covered up until we bring that over to the right and now it's over the green. See how that works? Cool. So that's everything you need to know about basic texturing. There's obviously as with everything else there's more to be known about texturing but this is absolutely what you need to get started. So go make stuff, texture stuff. I'm Neil Baramblad. <laughs> You're watching this at creativecal.net. This is Cinema 4D Bootcamp, the ultimate 
awesome Cinema 4D introductory series. There is more to be found. Stay tuned.